Hi and welcome back. It's Vicky Papayoanu here with the first part of this month's Create Date. I will create four cards today and another four tomorrow featuring the latest release by my favorite things. Now I want to create my own glitter paper and uh, you can either use uh, glitter embossing powder and cover up a piece of paper or you can use these uh, papers. These are very thin and they are um, self-adhesive. They are actually by Tim Holtz. So just because it's so thin, I'm going to stick it on a thicker cardstock. And I'm going to use the die set that is called Dear Love. This is an adorable uh, die set and it went uh, sold out immediately as it uh, came out. Uh, hopefully they will bring it back in stock. So I'm going to cut out all the designs from this set, uh, from this uh, glitter cardstock that I have created. I'm going to run it through my Sizzix machine. And once I had everything cut out, I'm going to show you, I hope you can see how shiny that looks. I am going to show you a fun thing. Now, if um, you use alcohol markers, you can go over this uh, glitter paper and color it in any color you like. And just uh, I just test it out there in my scraps. So I'm going to uh, slightly change the color of the antlers and uh, make it a little bit darker so that they stand out against that uh, deer a little bit more. Now, when you use alcohol markers over that glitter paper, and that's the case when you work with that over um, any glitter, the alcohol marker will cover it up, but it's not going to cover up the shine. So I'm not losing the shine at the moment, I'm just making it darker. And the die set also cuts out uh, a bunch of uh, tiny little hearts. So before I pop them out of uh, the paper, I'm going to color them with a dark uh, red color. And now I can separate them from the rest of the paper and I have everything ready. Now there are tiny little dots that you can color and uh, they can be their noses. But instead of using them as their nose, I decided to use them as their eyes. Now I have cut out this piece of paper which is going to be the ground for my little scene and for that I used uh, one of the Hit the Slopes uh, dies and uh, that was from a previous release by My Favorite Things. If you don't have these uh, dies you can just use your scissors to cut a little curve. I'm going to place it at the bottom of this white cardstock. By the way I have cut out this cardstock with my stitched rectangle dies. They give a lovely stitched finish around the edges of the panel. And now as you can see, I'm just using tape at the back of my tears and I'm just going to stick them, creating my little scene. Now for sticking down the antlers, I'm using my glue pen at the back and uh, I'm just going to stick them coming out from uh, their heads. And as always, you will find links down below to the description area as well as on my blog to links to all the products I am using for creating all these cards, including the stamps, the dyes, the inks, everything. Now, I am, have added a dot of um, glue on each one of their eyes so that I can stick the, uh, those black dots inside. But instead of doing that, which is um, <laughs> quite difficult fighting with those tiny little pieces, you can just use a um, black Nouveau drop and just add a dot inside their eyes, which is going to be shiny. Now, I have used this Joy uh, die cut that's from the previous release by My Favorite Things and I cut it out of white cardstock so it matches perfectly the color thing that I'm going for. Uh, I want to keep everything uh, quite simple for this card. I love gold and white together. I think they give a beautiful, um, elegant look. So I'm adding some uh, glue at the back of my sentiment. I'm going to stick that down. I'm also going to stick down the little dot. And by the way, the pen that I'm using to pick up uh, the tiny little pieces of paper is just a wax pen that is used for nail art. It's super inexpensive and you can find it easily online. Now I'm using a craft uh, paper. This is a Nina Desert cardstock and uh, I'm going to cut it in half. I have first uh, scored it in half and now cutting it again. So now I end up having two top folding cards and this is going to be my card base. You can go with gold card base. It would uh, look fantastic. I wanted to keep everything quite subtle for this card since I already have too much glitter on top of it. I'm just going to chop off a tiny piece of antler that was hanging out. And now to finish off my card, I'm going to add a tiny little heart in between those little deers. So a dot of glue there. 
and I'm gonna call this card done. I just love the look, elegant and shiny at the same time. Now this is the mesmerizing mandala die and I think that it creates the perfect focal point for clean and simple cards but uh, super elegant. Now I am going to use a piece of double sided tape here so I am going to cover up this piece of white cardstock with that and then I am going to place my die on top of it and I am going to run it through my big shot. This is going to be my focal point, so I need it to be quite sturdy, so I used very thick cardstock, that's uh, 120 pounds, so that's why I ran it twice through my big shot. And even though I did that, it wasn't cut out completely, so I'm going to run it again using this metal shim, which is going to make a big difference, it's going to make your die cutting super easy when uh, it comes to such intricate dies and uh, super thick cardstock. So you see that now everything is cut out, I'm just going to pop out all the inside pieces. And you can see how beautiful the finished result is. I'm now going to peel off the top. So this is going to become a sticker at the top. Just because I used that uh, tape adhesive in the beginning. And the idea is to add glitter on top of uh, that mandala. And it's going to turn it into super shiny one. Now I just love glitter when it comes to Christmas projects. And I don't mind uh, getting a little bit of glitter all over me. But if you don't like that you can always use um, a simple paper to cut out your mandala. Then you can apply Versa marking, And then apply embossing powder on top of it. It's going to give a nice shine if it's a glitter embossing powder. But it's not going to be as shiny as. Um, when you apply glitter just like I'm doing now. So now I'm going to put back the glitter inside the jar and by the way this is a beautiful glitter by Nuvo and uh, that's called Ice White. It's super shiny and I just love the effect. As you can see I'm using my finger to press the glitter on top of my medallion and this is going to eliminate the glitter that uh, goes off and all over the place when you send that to your recipient. I went with uh, Season's Greetings as my sentiment and uh, this comes from a tiny little stamp set that is packed with uh, little sentiments perfect for your Christmas cards. It's called Snow Globe uh, Sentiments and you will find it down below. To cut out my sentiment I'm going to use this banner die from a previous release by my favorite things. If you don't have such a die you can just use your paper trimmer and your scissors to create the fish tails. So at the center and at the back of my medallion I used some foam tape and I'm going to place that directly on top of uh, a panel that I have cut out in size. This is slightly smaller than the standard card so it's going to give a lovely frame around it when I stick that on my card base. And I'm going to cover it up with the sentiment. So the sentiment is going to go at the center and my panel is ready. It does stick out a little bit and I just love that because it gives uh, some dimension on my card and I hope you can see the shine on uh, that beautiful panel. You will find links to this cardstock down below. It's a must have for your Christmas uh, greeting cards. I think it's so beautiful that uh, shading effect that it gives. Now I'm going to stick that on top of a white card base and my card is finished. Very elegant, really simple to create and I think you can uh, really mass produce them quite easily. Especially if you use ready-made glitter paper to cut out your medallions so you don't have to do all the extra steps with the glitter. Now let's move on to the third card for today. For this I'm going to use my Distress Oxide inks to create a fun background by using this fun technique. I'm just adding some um, uh, ink on top of my glass mat and I'm going to add some water on top of them. This is going to help all the colors to mix nicely and I'm working on a piece of paper that is actually watercolor paper. So it's going to absorb all that ink nicely. So, so now I'm going to add a little bit of ink as you can see. I don't care how that looks but I'm going to use my heat gun and try out the first layer. I'm going to work on that again and again until I'm happy with the outcome. 
I cleaned up all the previous uh, ink just because it was um, getting muddy with all that water that I have added and here I am doing the same thing again. The three Distress Oxide colors that I'm working with are Faded Jeans, Broken China and Ice Spruce and I think they make a perfect combination for winter backgrounds. After repeating this process a couple of times I got this beautiful background and you can leave it as it is, I think it looks uh, great as it is now but I'm going to enhance it even more by applying a little bit of ink with my brush I'm starting at the bottom with a darker color which is faded jeans and as I move to the top I will switch to broken china and last I'll use the iced spruce. I'm not introducing any other color, I just work with the three colors that I used in the beginning for my background. And I really love the effect, I just love the background at the moment, so all I'm going to do is to add some splashes of water to create a more interesting effect. The water reacts with ink and it uh, lifts it, so it's going to give me that beautiful finished look. Now all I'm going to do is to cut out the word piece and this is the die that has just been released. I'm going to place it at the bottom of my panel exactly where the darker place is so it's going to give a nice contrast. I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine and I love this die just because it gives you that big bold sentiment and you can either use the alphas that you are going to cut out or you can use the negative just like I'm going to do for this card. As I'm separating the letters from my background, I will make sure that I will not lose the inside pieces from the letter A and from the letter P because I will be using them later on. These are the layered snowflakes dies and uh, it matches perfectly with the designs in the snowflake splendor. I am not going to use in this card the stamp but I'm only going to use the dies. I'm not even going to separate them. I'll just bring in a white piece of cardstock and cut them all out. Now all these uh, snowflakes layered somehow one on top of the other and this uh, stamp set is going to help me know which one will go over which uh, die cut. Of course you can mix and match them, you don't have to make them the correct way. But uh, in the stamp set there is a line that uh, gives you the grouping of all those snowflakes. So I'm going to follow that and just create um, the layers. And then I'm going to place them on top of my background and just decide where everything is going to go. Now some of the snowflakes have uh, three layers, others have only two and some are just on their own. And after playing around for a while deciding uh, where everything is going to go, now I can uh, go ahead and commit with glue. For sticking one on top of the other I'm using uh, glue, white glue at the center of my snowflakes. I'm not adding glue all over the place, I just want to have that dimension with all those different layers popping one on top of the other. So nothing is totally flat, glued flat on top. And uh, at the back I'm going to add again a little bit of glue at the center and stick it down. My panel is now ready, I'm going to use my scissors to cut out the excess from this snowflake there and I'm going to stick that on top of a standard card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm using white glue at the back to stick this panel just because I find this uh, fine tip easier to work with when I try to apply adhesive in between those cut out letters. So I'm going to place my panel on top of my card base and the good thing about using uh, white glue is that you can slide the piece on uh, in place until you are happy with the placement and you know that it's uh, totally centered. And now I'm going to go back and uh, add those inside pieces on the letters. So I'm using the actual letter as a stencil to place those little inside pieces in the correct place. And I am going to finish off my card by adding some glitter at the center of my snowflakes. For that I am using uh, Glitter Drops by Nuvo and that's uh, White Blizzard.
and let's move on to the last card for today. For that I'm going to create my own pattern paper and I'm using the Coffee Break stamp set. I'm going to stamp a bunch of different images with you by using uh, the Latte ink by my favorite things and the idea is to cover up completely the background. I'm working on a piece of white cardstock that I have cut out by using the new rectangle mod stitched dies and this give, uh, gives that uh, interesting look on uh, the two corners that are around it and it also has a beautiful stitching around it. Now this stamp set is quite versatile because it gives you the outline of all the images and it also gives you a solid image that you can use to color in the inside pieces. Now of course you can use your favorite coloring method to color them but I decided to go quite uh, simple today and quick so I am going to go monochromatic for this card and I'm using a very pale blue for coloring the inside pieces of all my images. I'm going to do the exact same thing for everything. It doesn't have to be perfect so I'm not uh, fuzzing too much about um, the stamping and I'm not introducing any new ink pads, I'm just working with those two colors. Of course you can go very colorful for your background, I decided to go quite monochromatic and um, uh, by using this uh, pale blue color I'm making this card to be both masculine and feminine. Now I'm going to choose a sentiment from the Coffee Break stamp set. I'm going to stamp that on craft paper by using the same brown ink that I used in the whole background. I'm going to cut that out with uh, my banner die and this is a set that I use a lot for sentiments and then I'm going to stick that with some foam tape at the back on top of my panel. To make it look more interesting I'm going to offset it a little bit and I'm going to cut out with my scissors the excess. I have already created my standard card that's four and a quarter by five and a half by using a pale blue cardstock that matches perfectly the blue on top of my card and you can create uh, pretty much the same design by using your favorite color or the color of uh, the favorite color of your recipient. And of course you can call this card done but just because I love some sparkle on my cards I used my shimmer pen and added uh, some sparkle on the blue parts of my background. And another idea is to use glossy accents where the coffee is to make it uh, more shiny. And this is going to finish off my card. And these were all the four cards for today. I will be back tomorrow with the second part of Create8, sharing four more cards and uh, featuring products from the latest release by my favorite things. I hope you had fun and got inspired. Thank you all so much for visiting and I'll see you all tomorrow.